Staying organized is important when you're working in Adobe Animate. This means keeping things separate, and there are two main ways to do this. You can use layers, or you can put your drawings into a container, like a group, a drawing object, or a symbol. Today, we're going to look at how to use groups to keep your Adobe Animate project organized without creating more layers. But first, why use groups instead of creating more layers? The short answer is that creating a group is a lot quicker and simpler than setting up new layers. When a great idea pops into your head, groups are a great way to maintain some level of organization without getting distracted by how many layers do I need? What should I name this layer? Which layer should I hide? Should I lock this layer? All that kind of stuff. This is especially useful when you're trying to just be creative and quickly try out some new ideas. With that said, let's head into Adobe Animate and start by creating a group. To create a group, go up to Modify and select Group. Or you can just use the keyboard shortcut Command G and you can see in the navigation bar that we are now inside a group. The timeline is grayed out because groups can't store layers or frames. Groups can only contain drawings or other containers. This actually means that besides these drawings, I can create even more groups inside this group. So let's go ahead and create another group. This time, I'll start by selecting one of these shapes. In this case, I want this pupil over here before going up to modify and selecting group. This blue box that appears around the shape shows that it has been put inside a new group. To show you how groups keep things separate, I'm going to move our new group so that it just touches or overlaps this other shape, which is not in the group. And I'll do the same with this other pupil, which is not in the group, making sure that it just touches this other shape. If I decide later that I hate this and I don't want the eyes to be looking upwards, I can easily select the group and move it because the group keeps both of these shapes separate. If I try to do the same thing with this pupil, which was not in a group, you can see that the pupil has actually joined with the other shape and I can no longer move them individually. I'll move this pupil back up so he's no longer cross-eyed and I'll show you another way that groups keep your drawing separate. Switching to the eraser tool, notice how it affects everything except the shape that's in the group. To make changes to that shape, you first need to double click on the group to go inside it. Looking at the navigation bar, you'll see that we are now inside a group, which is inside another group. On the stage, you can make changes to the shape, like erasing or drawing more stuff or stretching it whatever weird ways you want. Or you can even create more groups if you felt like it. I don't, so I'm going to delete that. And you can also see that everything outside the current group is faded out and won't be affected by anything you do because the group, as I've been saying over and over again, keeps things separate. Let's give this pupil another highlight to make it a little cuter. And when you're done making whatever changes you want it to make, you can exit the group using the navigation bar or by double clicking on an empty space. Let's also exit this group and go back to the main stage where I'll show you how to take things out of groups. With a group selected, go up to modify and select break apart or press command B and everything inside the group is released. You will notice that this pupil over here is still a group. But that's because this group was nested inside the group that we just broke. You can just press Command B one more time if you want to break this group too. Moving on, here's a few more things you'll need to know if you want to use groups. First, groups on the same layer have a stacking order. This means some groups are above and some groups are below. However, all groups will always be above ungrouped shapes. To give you an example, I'll select these eyes and put them in a group by pressing Command G and then I'll use the shape tool to draw a head. As you can see, the eyes remain above the head because it's in a group and the head is not. Let's quickly change the color of the eyes so it's a bit easier to see. If you remember from earlier in the video, I'm going to double click on the group to go inside it and then I'm going to change its color. And I might also add a fill with the paint bucket, making it white so it stands out and double click on an empty space to exit the group. There we have it, kind of looks like an emoji. And now the next important thing that you need to know is that new groups are always created above everything else, including other groups. This is pretty important to remember because otherwise you might end up really confused. To give you an example, I'm going to select a head and then press Command G to put it in a group. As you can see, this new group has been created above the eyes making it look like the eyes have just disappeared. But if I move the group, you can see that they're actually still there. 
To fix this, we need to change the stacking order. You can do this by selecting a group. In this case, I want to select the head and then going up to modify and picking from one of these options in a range. As you might guess, bring forward moves the group up towards the top of stack, or send backward moves it down towards the bottom of the stack. If you've got heaps of groups, bring to front and send to back will move it all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom. We've got the head group selected and I want to move it all the way to the bottom below the eye group. So let's just select send to back. Perfect. The eyes are now above the head group in the stacking order. I should point out that the stacking order also includes symbols and drawing objects that are on the same layer, but you can arrange all of them as you need by doing the same thing, going up to modify and selecting from arrange, or using one of the keyboard shortcuts. You should now understand what a group is, why you might want to use it, how to create and break groups, how to make changes to whatever's inside a group, and how to change the stacking order of groups so it shows up on the stage the way you want it to. I hope you guys have found this helpful, especially Yappa Yap Animation who requested this video. And if you also have a question you want me to answer, just leave it in the comments below. And perhaps you should also subscribe so you don't miss that video when it comes out. As a final note, groups are great for some things. It's good for quickly getting ideas out and being creative and just not having to think about organization too much. But if you're planning on reusing your design or animation later or in a different project, you might want to consider using symbols. Symbols have a lot in common with groups, like the stacking order and the way it keeps things separate on the same layer, but it can also store multiple layers and multiple frames. And possibly the biggest plus is that symbols are also stored in the library, making it very easy to just grab it and reuse it wherever you want. If you want to learn more about symbols, check out my introduction to symbols over somewhere at the top and also in the video description. Anyways, thanks for watching as always and have a nice week. Goodbye.